Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. Um, I just wanted to introduce this video. Now, I had loads and loads of questions for Ask Ali this week. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad that you're all pleased that it's back. Um, I'm going to um, do this video into two sections because the questions generally fell into two different categories. So there were the category of application tips um, and another category, which are swatch requests. So this first part that you're going to see today with my grubby makeup top on, I must go and put this in the wash now. <laughs> um, the first part is going to be application tips. And then the second part will be the swatch requests that you asked for. There was one question that didn't quite fall into either category. And that one I'm going to start with. So let me just check the person that asked the question. Okay, the question was from Jay Griff and she said, what are my honest thoughts about Charlotte Tilbury? And do I feel that it lives up to the luxury ethos and price tag, her, the customer service? Okay, now um, I'm always honest, as you know, and I think it's one thing I'm proud to say, although I'm an absolute fan of Charlotte Tilbury, that I like to bring my honest opinions um, because I am always aware of the fact that when I tune into a review, I don't want to hear somebody saying that everything's brilliant when it's not. I want to be able to trust that reviewer. So, but what I will say, honestly, in terms of my own experience, um, I don't think there's been any time that I've really been unsatisfied. I think when I ordered that um, lipstick, the Sunset Lover, at first, they were trying to deny that anyone else had a problem with it. And I said, come and look at my channel and go and look at your reviews. And I got my money back. Um, when I've had faulty products, I've got my money back. Um, whenever I've been in touch with them, they've got back pretty quickly. But I having said that, I do know that that's not everybody's experience. Um, I do remember that before I ordered from Charlotte Tilbury, I went onto the Facebook page, my first ever order, and I was nearly put off ordering because there were so many people talking about bad customer service that it nearly actually put me off ordering. Who knows what would have happened after that? Um, but I haven't really had that. Now, a lot of the time in recent times when I've contacted them, I they're aware of the fact that I've got a YouTube channel. Even though I'm quite a small channel, um, when I went to the event, Sophia came up and went, oh, it's Ali M, it's Ali M. Um, because they do, you know, Sophia watches me. I know Sophia watches me. I know that um, some of the PR people in Charlotte Tilbury are aware of me. Um, so that might influence the response I get. Um, so I, I think the other thing to say is I think that it's variable. From what I've heard from feedback from others, some people get really good experience and other people don't. And I think that may be to do with the location. Um, and I find that with Pat McGrath as well. A lot of people in the UK have, have made complaints about Pat McGrath customer services. But if you live in the US, then actually it's really good. So I do think it might be to do with um, geographic location. So I hope that's helpful. So I would say personally, I've had good experiences, but I have also heard of other people that haven't. I do, um, one thing I will say about packaging, and I'm waiting for an order to arrive now. Now, I think it's good that Charlotte Tilbury are now doing eco packaging, um, because I think a lot of brands don't really think about it and things come wrapped in lots of tissue paper and stuff that then has to be recycled. And I think that's good. But I have to say that um, the new eco packaging, I always opt for the eco packaging, um, but there's something special gone from the packaging. 
and the way it used to be tissue wrapped and then the sticker it always looks so beautiful and i know you can still opt to have that if you want to you pay a little bit extra um but there was something about the luxury way that they pack the items that's kind of gone a bit bland now which is a shame but i do understand that it helps the environment but i do have to say that tell me what you think about that i don't know what the solution is can we have something that looks luxury and pampering but is also eco-friendly i don't know i'm sure that's possible somehow um let me know your thoughts about that anyway i hope you enjoy the rest of this video which is answering people's questions about certain makeup application tips and tune in um, for part two when I'll be doing the swatch requests that people ask for. Um, I'm also the next video that's going to go out before part two is going to be the first impression of a new Charlotte Tilbury palette that is arriving as we speak. All right, take care. See you all soon. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm off to wash this. This needs a wash now. It's the collar. It's really bad. All right, take care. See you all soon. Okay, excuse my grungy makeup top. Now, I wanted to address this question. It's really good, as all of your questions are. I think this question applies to a lot of us, including me. For any of you that have got hooded lids. Now, this is a question from PM and she said she has a real problem with keeping eye makeup on her lids. She's tried all makeup brands, even expensive ones, and she's tried all eye primers. And by the end of the day, all she's left with is some eyeliner and her eyeshadow is gone. I feel your pain. I definitely do. Um, when you've got hooded lids, the problem is that this part kind of rubs against the, the bottom part and it starts to rub off. We've all been there. Now, first of all, I would say start by putting primer or concealer on, doesn't matter what. And as you put it on, make sure it's perfectly blended in and then put powder, set it, right? Because Anything that is going to be slightly moist is going to crease into the hood there, right? So just make sure that you set it straight away with some powder. I like to use this brush actually, which is a nose brush, but it's a really good one for just getting the powder in. This is a, a Morph MO. It's supposed to be for nose shaping, but it's a really good fat brush for getting the powder and really dabbing over it so that it's going to stop anything like concealer or primer moving once you set it with powder. That's the first step. Now, this is going to take a bit more work, but it's worth it in the end. So I'm going to show you this little method and I think you'll find that this will make your makeup last a lot longer, but you will have to do quite a bit more blending. Okay, so First of all, we're going to line our eyes and I'm using today the Mesmerising Maroon. So we want a matte shade, okay? And I'm just going to line my eyelids. So I'm just going to take that to the corner there. Okay, I'll just do one eye for now. And I saw a really good tip actually the other day which is to take take this and do the flick up to where your normal crease goes and then pull it up and extend where that line is and it works it will give you the right angle okay now i'm going to use this as an eyeshadow, all right? But we're gonna have to do a lot of blending. But what this will do is it will give you that base and the shadow of your eyeliner, but it will really make anything you put over it stick. Um, you may have seen me using a similar product 
where is it let me just get it and i'll be right back okay this one here makeup forever now this pencil is slightly better for doing this because it's slightly softer and so it won't drag your eyelids as much as putting an eyeliner on your lids you know because we're not just going to put it on here we're going to put it up here this is slightly softer and they work really well i'll put the details of that one but i'm just going to use a normal matte eyeliner and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the, the sort of um shape that i would normally do with a matte powder shadow so i'm going to take this across to where my brow kind of ends there in a straight line and then i'm going to t extend that flick all the way up there into a little triangle here right and then from about there and I'm going to have to pull this tight. I'm just going to fill in all of that here with some eyeliner. Okay. And then let's really make this stick well and truly stick okay then i'm going to take the metallic side of this and i'm going to put it on this side and just fill in the rest all the way underneath there like so all right I'm just going to thicken this line up here because I want to see this darker shade when I relax my lids. All right. So if you feel like you're dragging your skin too much, pull the skin taut. So when I close my eyes, I want to see it. Okay. And then we're going to blend like crazy, but don't worry too much because we will put powder over the top. Okay, so and then just to finish off before I do that, because it just drives me nuts. Otherwise, I'm just going to take the matte shade and take it underneath and link it up with what I've just done above. So just link that together there. Because otherwise it just looks weird. All right. Now, I'm going to get a kind of smudge brush because you're going to need quite a dense brush to blend this, okay? So let's get that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got this thick pencil brush. As I say, I got it from Amazon, but I quite like it. Now, I'm going to pull the skin a little bit taut so that I can just blend this out. So this is quite a... You know it's an eyeliner consistency but when you put the eyeshadow over the top of this it's going to stick and it will stay put and it won't budge and then i'm just doing this and if you need to you can finish off with your fingers i'm just going to do one eye for now so that you can see And then underneath like that okay i think i'm going to take my mesmerizing maroon palette now so i'll just get that and i'll be right back right i'm just going to close it up on this so before you start going in with the powder just make sure that you don't have a harsh line at the top because the powder's going to stick to that eyeliner okay and it's it's going to be difficult to actually blend it once you've got the powder on top okay now i'm going to put on with a blending brush so a nice fluffy brush this time i'm just going to put on the matte shade of this mesmerizing maroon 
just a little bit and dab it off on my hand and gradually build it up. But it's the same shade, it's just a powder. So now what we're doing is really we're setting it with the powder. But because it's a the eyeliner is a thicker consistency, it is not going to move like a powder. And what I'm going to do is after this video, I'm going to show this eyeshadow eight hours later so that you can see. All right, so you you just put a little bit of that and you can build it up as much as you want. Just make sure that you have set that matte shade. And then with your um, little pencil brush, set what you put underneath. Like that and then I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take this pop shade here with my fingers and I'm gonna dab it on with my fingers and this is really gonna stick again because it's sticking now to eyeliner as opposed to something that's a little bit more runny like a concealer it's sticking to eyeliner Okay, now you probably won't have a problem with the area up here because the hood isn't hitting that area. So with my pinky, I'm just going to put that onto bare skin. There's no eyeliner up there and just blend it out. Okay, then just clean up the sides. I'm just going to do it quickly with my fingers. And there you have your eyeshadow, which is most likely to stay now because you've put it over an eyeliner as opposed to anything else. And an eyeliner is just made to stick a lot more firmly to the skin. Okay, if you want, you can take a little bit of your metallic in here. And if like me, again, your, your eyeliner starts to smudge throughout the day in that inner corner, set that as well with your pencil brush. So I'm just going to take the pencil brush again and take some of that pop shade and just set it. Like that. All right, I'm going to get on and do the other side now. And I will post a photograph eight hours later to see if this lasts. And I've got very hooded eyes, as you can see. Look. So um, hopefully this will work well. I'm going to go and complete the other eye now. I just thought I'd zoom in on the shape that before blending that you do on the eye with the eyeliner. Right, I have a nice clean dressing gown on now um just wanted to say i'm really sorry last night i went to take my makeup off and i had my makeup remover all over my face and thought oh no i didn't take a picture and i was supposed to take a picture eight hours later but i can confirm you'll just have to trust me that my eyeshadow did not budge so it does really work use an eyeliner to as a base before putting on your eyeshadow so use a coordinating shade and these um, double-ended Charlotte Tilbury eyeliners are perfect because you have a matte shade for putting in the crease and then you have a metallic shade for putting on the mobile lid so that should help everything stay in place because you're putting that on first and then you're setting it you're using your eyeshadow powder to set it and then it sticks like glue and I really had to work hard to remove it. So apologies for that. I hope that's really been helpful. I will do another demo of that and show you how it lasts. Um, but I just forgot last night. I'm really sorry. Okay. Okay, so next we have a question from Rebecca, which is how do you apply red lipstick or dark lipstick now um there's really 
I mean, it's, it's really what you want to do with it. I always say with dark lipstick, you it's one of either extreme. You either pat it on like a stain and it's sort of make it very natural stain and build it up or you put it on very carefully and quite boldly. Now, if you do the latter of the two, which was what I'm going to do, you need to make sure that you've got a reasonably good base on and that your, your, your complexion is looking pretty flawless. Like not, it's not, so if you're doing the dabbing on stain, then that can be for more of a natural look. But if you're going for a dark red lip or a dark lip, then you need, I think, to make sure that you've got very flawless complexion because what a dark red lip, very defined dark red lip does is it kind of highlights any imperfections in the skin. So you also need to make sure that you need to have a very sharp pencil before you start because you really want to define the lips. So let me just show you the first way of doing things and then I'm going to take it off and show you the second way. So the first way, I'm just going to use Pillow Talk Intense and I'll show you what I mean by um, the first way of kind of having a stain more than anything else. Okay, so if you're going to do a stain, you just take your finger on your dark lipstick and you gradually start patting it on. And it's a lovely look. And especially if you're a bit afraid of darker lipsticks and you're just wanting to get used to it. So this is Pillow Talk Intense. But as you see, see, it doesn't look that intense at the moment. You can gradually build it up, but it looks it looks good. And then you could put some gloss over it and you don't need lip liner. So that's the first way of doing a kind of, and you can do that with red as well. But I'm going to do it the kind of more pronounced way, the second way. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so sharp lip liner. And then you can either fill the whole lip in or just fill the outer corners. If you want a slight ombre. And then it's even better if you get a lip brush, but I never have the patience for a lip brush. And as long as you've got a steady hand, Okay, so that's that. Now, if you're going for the bolder of the two, you might want to go a little less on your eyes, but you don't have to. There's no rules in makeup. Um, but this is, then what I would make sure you do, you see where there's a bit of unevenness. You can kind of go along with a Q-tip and then get some um, concealer and make sure that you've got, because it anything like, a very uneven line is going to show up and any imperfections around the lip are going to show up. And I'm just going to show you what I do there. Okay, so first on in, I'm just going to go around and just tidy up that line.
with a Q-tip. Some of this will be from when I patted it in. And then with the other side of the Q-tip, I'm just going to put a little bit of concealer on the back of my hand and then just trace around the lips. And there you have it. Make sure your concealer isn't too fair, otherwise you're going to have to start blending it upwards into your skin. This is just the right colour. and I'm using this Instant Anti-Age Eraser Concealer um, from Maybelline. And I don't know what colour it is because the colour's rubbed off. I think it's shade 8. Okay, so that's how I would do that. Okay, I'm not doing all these questions in one sitting, but I do want to tackle one last question before I have a break. Look at my eye watering. Oh, I wish someone would answer how to stop your eyes watering. Right, okay. So we had a question from Bushra. Let me just go and double check the question. Okay, so Busha said that basically she finds that her makeup slides off throughout the day. She sweats quite a lot on her cheeks and on her head and it doesn't stay put. And could I give her any tips to help her makeup stay put? Of course I can. So I, I mean, essentially I could make a video on its own about this subject. So first of all, I think you want to steer clear of foundations that are too moisturizing we're all going for glowy foundations um at the moment there's been a kind of trend about them haven't they but the thing is that they are not very good if you have got sort of problems with sweating and condensation whatever throughout the day because they've got more moisturizers in so they are more likely to melt so first of all i would go for a matte foundation now if you find that you've got fine lines you might want to mix your foundation so that you go for sort of a matte foundation around the areas where you sweat more and then a similar the same brand probably the same color um in in a more glowy one in other areas say around your cheeks or around the fine lines on your eyes if you've got fine lines okay but I would go for something matte. Um, Charlotte's Airbrush Flawless is quite matte. Um, so I definitely do that first. Um, and then the second thing I would say to you is when you're doing your powder, and again, you want to avoid this if you've got fine lines anywhere, but you want to take one of these kind of, this is, I need to wash this, look at that. You want to take one of these little powder puffs and if possible, loose powder and then actually it's not too bad i'm just gonna it looks worse than it is then what you want to do is with loose powder i used to do this all the time on stage so let's just say that you get sweaty down the center of your face as a lot of us do right so you want to put the loose powder on and you want to roll it and press it into the skin like that roll and press roll and press so you're really pushing it into the skin right 
roll and press, roll and press and avoid under your eyes because it would kind of, kind of be baking it, right? So anywhere around here, around the chin, anywhere that you're likely to roll and press into the skin and do that for a few layers, right? Until you've got a bit of an excess on your face and then take a big fluffy clean brush and wait, wait a couple of minutes and let it sink into your makeup and then take a big fluffy brush and sweep the excess off. And that will really help your makeup to stay in place. And I have one more tip before I finish on this question. Okay, we all love Charlotte setting spray, don't we? And it is lovely and it's really kind to the skin. But for humidity proof and waterproof and sweat proof, I really don't think you can go wrong with Huda Beauty's Rest in Boss Face. It is like hairspray for the face. Be warned though, if you don't like fragrance, you're not gonna like it. But once you put this on, your makeup will not melt. It will not melt. I'm gonna put some of it on now, actually. And I love the smell of this. Right, if I was going to an all day wedding, that is what I'd put on my face. Now, the only thing is, it will make you look a little bit flat, right? Because you basically um, put powder on and this, and you're not gonna be as glowy, but don't forget that once your natural humidity and everything else, you're gonna start to look glowy anyway. So, don't worry about it now, because basically from what you're saying, you're going to end up with a little bit of a glow anyway, which will counteract. But that should help your makeup stay in place. But I'm going to do a separate video on this subject and do a whole makeup look from scratch. So watch this space, Bushra. I'm going to do a whole video for you coming up soon. Okay, I have got time for one more question, and this is from Stacy, which is, could you show us how to apply the Hollywood contour bond, please? Now, this ties in a little bit with Rebecca's question, which was, what's the difference between bronzing and contouring, which I'm going to get on to next, but I'm going to kind of answer it a bit in this question as well. So, I'm sorry about this eye, it's watering, and now, of course, this bit is smudging, but it's only where my eye's been watering. Okay, so basically what you want to do when you're contouring your face with any product is you basically, you don't want to be adding shadow where shadow doesn't naturally exist. Look at your face very carefully in the mirror and look and see where do the shadows kind of naturally fall, right? Where do you want to accentuate? Now, if you look, I haven't really got much cheekbones, never have. But you know that Charlotte says suck in your cheeks and follow the hollow. I don't really have much of a hollow, but if I do that, you'll see that that's where the shadow naturally hits. And that's where you're going to want to contour. And you can see I've got shadow there. And just where I've got my double chin, you can see the shadow stops and then I've got a bit of a highlighted area. So what, what we want to do is we can hide that by putting shadow there and then it will make that part recede away, okay? So, now, you can use either shade, medium to dark or light to medium. I've seen Sophia Tilbury using medium to dark on really pale people. It's whatever your preference is. And I would definitely use the Hollywood Contour brush. It is perfect for applying this. Now, easy does it. You can always go back and apply more. Go from about the middle of your ear, sort of about I would, just above the middle of your ear. And you want to follow it down as though you're... Now, some people say it as though towards the centre of your nose, but I think different people have got different face shapes. But if you look at mine, you can see the shadow is going to kind of fall like that. If I was to go to the middle of my nose, that would be too high up on me. 
Now look, if I turn, can you see where the shadow is? That's where I want to be taking it. Now, start off, if you're a bit timid, just put it in dots like that because you can always go back and add more. And again here, can you see where that natural line of shadow is? So I'm going to go again from that about three quarters of the way up the ear and I'm going to follow that down. And actually my shadow sort of goes down like that. So I'm going to just suggest that a little bit. Okay, and then now you see people putting contour on the top of their heads. Okay, now it just depends. You might not want, if you've got a short forehead, right, you might not want to put contour up there because it depends on, if you've got a long forehead, you might want to make it look shorter. So wherever you're putting the contour is going to make that bit look smaller. Um, I've got, it's quite short there, but it's quite wide there. So I kind of like to do this and this because that will just make my face look slightly slimmer. But I don't tend to put too much up there um, all the time because I actually think I don't have that tall a forehead. And I definitely want to, you see, I don't have a very pronounced jawline. So what I can do is I can cheat that a little bit. By doing that and again I'm just gonna dot that there and where that double chin is round there and I always like to do this to give me a bit more of a pointy chin because my chin is quite round all right and then contouring your nose now go easily around the nose because again you can always add more later now you need to take that up there, but I find if I do that on the wand, I end up applying too much. You can always blend it up. And then you just take your contour brush, the thick end, and you just start to gradually blend it in. And it is so easy. And then blend it up. You don't want to blend it down. You want to blend it up. Okay. Otherwise, you're just going to make your jawbone sink. You kind of want to blend it towards your ear and up. And again here. Now, I've been quite timid with this. So I'll gradually build it up. And you'll see. Now, when you're doing your nose, take the other end. And make sure you blend it up. To where that natural shadow goes into your nose. I know at the moment it looks a bit silly, but we'll blend it out. Okay, and then a bit on the end of the nose. And then what I do is I pinch my nose so that I'm blending it up. I pinch it with my fingers. I find that blends it the best. And then don't forget this, I'm always forgetting this. And again, just blend it up towards the ear. You can blend it a little bit down if you've got too much. I'm just going to blend that bit in there and in there. And I want plenty of shadow where my double chin is. And again, up there. Go and as you get more confident, you can just apply more and as you can see it doesn't dry super quickly so you can don't have to worry that it's going to dry too quickly and i'm going to just build up and i'm going to put a little bit more in that corner there just to give me a bit more of a suggestion of a cheekbone building that bit up because that's the bit that you want the shadow more than anywhere to suggest the shadow when you turn your face round. And just blend it up into the ear. I'm just gonna give that, because I don't want to blend it down.
Okay, I hope that's helpful. Okay, time for another question. I keep thinking my battery's gonna go, but it's not. So Rebecca asked a really great question, which is what is the difference between contouring and bronzing? She's asked a lot about it on her channel. So the difference between bronzing and contouring, they often get confused because, you know, for one, Charlotte brought out bronze and glow and she often contours with it. And a lot of people contour with bronzing products. Um, and so people get very confused about the difference between the two. But if you think that contouring is about playing with the shadows of your face to try and accentuate your face shape, bronzing is not that. Now, I think um, some of the best um, some of the best sculpting products are actually things like Kevin Aquan, which are more grey than brown. They don't look like bronzers. Um, this is a proper bronzer because it's kind of orangey, reddy kind of mix. Whereas with a with a, um, a sculpting product, you want it to look a bit more grey like the contour product I've just used, because that is going to emulate a shadow. A bronzer's not going to emulate a shadow, although people often do use them as sculpting, but they just don't actually sculpt your face very well. So what a bronzer is, is more about where would the sun naturally hit your face? The sun isn't na going to naturally hit your face where the shadows are on your face. They're often on the kind of highlighted points of your face. So when you're going for your bronzing, although people often go like this, that's where my, my sculpting is, but this is where the sun would hit. Okay, and this is gonna look more like sun-kissed, rather than a shadow. And then the sun would hit you over your nose if you were out in the middle of Spain, and it would hit you in the center of the forehead where anywhere that's prominent, it would hit you. And that's what a bronzer is. So it's not meant to be shading. If I shaded using this, this would not look like a shade. This would look like sunburn or suntan so that's the difference contouring is about following shadow to accentuate your face and bronzing is more about now i'm going to do it here because i have a very distinct change in color when i move down to my neck and chest so just to help that transition I'll just put some bronzer there, but that's because I want to look more tanned, not because here I want to create a shadow to get rid of that double chin. Here, I just want to look more tanned. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, but it is very confusing because people often do use bronzers as sculpting shades and Charlotte sort of did a middle of the rain when she did the film star bronze and glow. It's not quite a bronzer. It's not quite a sculptor. It's a kind of hybrid. And that's what confuses people. So um, I hope that's been helpful. But any questions do ask. Now, the next section of the video is going to be all about doing the swatches that you've asked for, which I shall do later on. So you will see a bit of a difference in the change of light. All right. Take care and I'll see you all very soon. I am going to put some highlighter on before I go out.